This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. If you'd like a free guide that explains the hidden link between relaxation and the Law of Attraction, or if you want more information about my books or my coaching, you can visit RadicalCounselor.com. Enjoy the episode. I know we've been discussing letting go, and then we got kind of far out about it last episode in regards to fear and some of the things that Jan Fraser talks about that are also very practical in terms of having a choice in fear, in choosing not to let fear overpower you. And so now I thought I would give us an additional amount of context or another option, I guess I should rather say, in regards to letting go, in regards to how we treat all this stuff. You know, I've recently mentioned the law of reversed effort in regards to QA, and I've mentioned the law of reversed effort a few times, and I thought we could just go over it a little bit more in regards to how QA explains it. If this is the first episode of this podcast that you've ever listened to, you probably want to start at another episode because I'm going to just dive kind of right into some of the main concepts. And it's going to be confusing if you don't know what I'm talking about. You're much better off listening to the podcast from the beginning. So let me first say that, like I always mention, terms are loose and malleable when it comes to law of attraction usually. And that even includes some of the most seemingly uh, concrete laws So when I talk about the law of reverse effort and when Kuwe talks about it, try to get beyond just the words to really understand the underlying concept he is pointing at because it's so profound. I'm going to read from Self Mastery Through Conscious Autosuggestion. Not too long ago, gave a quote from this book, which was, if others are happy or unhappy, it is because they imagine themselves to be happy or unhappy. It is possible for two people in exactly similar circumstances and conditions to become the one perfectly happy and the other absolutely miserable. I thought I would expand upon that and also expand upon our recent discussion about how unconscious is synonymous with imagination. They mean the same thing, most of the time at least, according to Kuwe and the way I look at it as well. Soon after that quote that I just read from Kuwe, he writes... But if the unconscious is the source of many of our ills and ailments, it can also bring about the cure of our mental or physical afflictions. Or in other words, if our imagination is the source of many of our ills and ailments, it can also bring about the cure of our mental or physical afflictions. Kuwe goes on to write, It can not only repair the evil it has done, but also cure real maladies, so great is its action on our organism. Isolate yourself in a room, Sit down in an easy chair, close your eyes to avoid all distraction, and think exclusively for a few moments, such and such a thing is going to disappear, or such and such a thing is going to happen. If you have really auto-suggested, that is, if your unconscious has absorbed the idea which you have suggested, then you will be astonished to see happen the very thing your mind dwelt upon. Or another way to word it, If your imagination has absorbed the idea which you have suggested, then you will be astonished to see happen the very thing your mind dwelt upon. Obviously, this is fascinating. And, you know, when people say that Neville is unique in saying this, they just are not aware of the history of the law of attraction or of Kuwait, because this is exactly what Neville is talking about, as well as so many other law of attraction teachers. Kuwait goes on to write, It is to be noted that it is the property of ideas auto-suggested to exist within us unrecognized. We only know of their existence by the effects they produce. In other words, we don't know what is going to happen through our auto-suggestion except through the results we get. So then Kuwait brings up this, this really key point. He says, Above all, this is an essential point. The will must not be brought into play in practicing auto-suggestion. Because if it is not in accord with the imagination, if one thinks, I will such and such a thing to happen, and the imagination says you are willing it, but it is not going to be, you will not only not obtain what you want, but moreover, exactly the opposite may happen. So this is the law of reversed effort. When you are trying to use willpower or mental effort, but your imagination or unconscious slash subconscious, is not in accord with what you want, your imagination is going to take over. And it doesn't matter how much you willfully, mentally exert effort to try to get what you want. 
your imagination is going to be antagonistic towards it and you're not going to get what you want, at least generally speaking, big picture wise. Hugely important to understand this point. Kuei goes on to say, This observation is of utmost importance and explains why results are so little satisfactory when, in treating moral ailments, one strives to re-educate the will. It is the training of the imagination which is necessary, and it is due to this difference that my method has often succeeded where other methods have failed. In other words, if you want to become a happier person and you often feel despondent or depressed, willpower is not going to make it happen. Your imagination is what's going to make it happen. Kuei says, The numerous experiments which I have made daily for 20 years, and which I have observed most carefully, have enabled me to arrive at the following conclusions, which I have summed up as laws. Number one, when the will and the imagination are opposed to each other, it is always the imagination which wins, without any exception whatever. Number two, in the conflict between the will and the imagination, the force of the imagination is in direct ratio to the square of the will. Number three, when the will and the imagination are in accord, one does not add to the other, but one is multiplied by the other. Number four, the imagination can be directed. And then he notes, the expressions in direct ratio to the square of the will and is multiplied are not rigorously exact. They are used simply as an illustration intended to make my meaning clearer. In other words, he's not talking about a mathematical law here. He's just using those terms to make clear what he's saying about how the imagination either exponentially adds to what we want or makes it so that it's not going to happen. And then Kuei says, From what has been said, it would seem that nobody should ever be ill. This is quite true. Every illness, almost without exception, can be made to yield to autosuggestion, however bold and however daring my affirmation may seem. I do not say that it always does yield, but it can be made to yield, which is different. In other words, Kuei is saying that this is how our mind works, this is how our body works, this is how our mind-body organism works. You don't have to use very esoteric spiritual terms to um, describe the functioning of our body and mind and how they work together well in unison or how they uh, work against each other antagonistically when our imagination is not in accord with what we want. And, he, and Kuei is saying theoretically that almost all of our ailments can be you know, either healed or at least fixed to some large degree by having our imagination and willpower in accord with each other and in accord with what we want, which is health, obviously. We all want to be healthy. Nobody wants to be unhealthy on a conscious level, right? And so if we can get our imagination to work with our willpower to make that happen, we're going to be in good shape, generally speaking. And again, what's wonderful about Kuei and all of these Law of Attraction teachers pretty much is that they're not saying... You have to believe all this, but if you test this out and practice with it, you'll see the points that the teacher is making, and then you'll be able to decide what is true for you. And Kue, you know, experimented with so many people and helped so many people using these principles over so many decades that he really has a firm conviction in what he's saying. And it's very easy to believe Kue compared to a lot of the other teachers you're going to hear or read who sometimes seem less believable in what they're saying and also just seem more vague in what they're talking about. You know, Kue is not vague at all. He's using these terms, will and imagination. I guess you could use different terms, um, but I think the point he's making is pretty, pretty obvious. And that's why Kue, in my opinion, is the best at just explaining these principles. So I thought I would put that in our discussion here just, you know, kind of add it to what we were talking about in regards to letting go and also in regards to choosing not to let fear overrun us. And a way to do that is not to assert our willpower over the fear, but instead to let the feelings of fear be there and to move through them, float through them as we were talking about, and then gradually get our imagination more and more in accord with what we do want and not letting these 
passing momentary feelings of fear overwhelm us any longer. Again, if this is the first episode you've ever listened to, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about. But go back, listen to uh, the previous few episodes or just all the episodes of this show, and I think it will make a lot more sense because we're always talking about the same points pretty much. We're just repeating them and going at them from different angles so we can further deepen our understanding of these helpful, practical, spiritual principles. I hope all this information was helpful. Thanks.